This episode of the Better Two Podcast is brought to you by Kitty Mystic and DM Needham, author of My Days with the Dark Muse, as well as Love is Worth Waiting For. Hi gang, Donna here. Thanks for tuning in to the Better Two Podcast. And dare I say, happy anniversary. It's one year today, March 23rd of 2022. On March 23rd of 2021, I embarked on this journey. At least I launched the first episode. It was recorded a few days beforehand. But truthfully, the very first episode started back in January when I sat down with my friend Sarah Martucci to discuss coming out as a medium. The problem with that was the sound sucked. And I couldn't figure out how to make it work because I was a newbie podcaster. And because it didn't work the first time, I was frustrated and I said, you know what? I'm not sure I really want to do this. And then I kept getting this nudge that you need to do this. This is part of who you are. You need to do this. Embrace it. And so that's what I did. And boy, did I embrace it. I went from doing one episode a week to two episodes a week to three episodes a week. And then now I'm doing four different shows, which is kind of crazy when you think about it, because that was never my intention. My intention was to do the one podcast and that was it. And now I'm fortunate enough to have a live show. That's done on Saturday with a co-host named Sherry Diamond, who I actually met as a podcast guest. She came on the show back in January to talk about how she lost 103 pounds with her Balance for Life program. And there was something that day when we talked that worlds collided and magic happens. That's how she likes to refer to it. And it's kind of amusing because that day we actually were wearing the same color shirt out of all things, and we talk about it on the podcast. But anyway, so we now have a live show, and we're starting our first guest, not this week, but the beginning of the last day, yeah, the last day of March, we will have our first guest on. So that's going to be fun. It'll be interactive, and uh, we do it live. So just tune into YouTube or Facebook, and we're not talking about the B2D2 live podcast. So talking about the journey, but that is the name of the show is B2D2 live. And the B2 is better too. And the D2 is uh, Donna Needham and Sherry Diamond. So there you go. That's the meaning behind that. But besides the better two podcast and the B2D2 podcast, we also have the better two weekly intuitive podcast. And I now have embarked on the B2 Soundtrack of Our Lives podcast, and that kind of is a passion project. That's something I wanted to do since I started this podcast, and it's about taking a person on a musical journey, about taking them back to the songs that mean something to them, that inspire them, that they can hear, and it will invoke an emotion of happiness, sadness, or anything in between. There's always that one song. I mean, I hate to say it for me, Susudio. I never was a fan of the song, but that song, when I hear it, I think about that long weekend that I stayed up counting it to go to Live Aid. So it has a memory attached to it. And a lot of music does. So that is something that is a biweekly podcast that is kind of a passion project. But the whole reason for this episode is to talk about the journey that this podcast has been on. While I had originally had an interview set up with my sound guy, who is now part of the B2 podcast, Rich Sai, we're going to end up doing that interview again because we had some technical sound problems and hence we're, re- you know, I'm recording, re-recording this episode. So let's take back, take a look back at this journey of the podcast. And I'm not going to play clips because it's all there for you. But when I think about the very first episode I did, which was Saving Mom, I sat down and realized that if I was going to do the Better Two podcast and I was going to have people be vulnerable to me, then I had to be vulnerable myself. And so I dug deep and I went and talked about the journey of losing my mom to her suicide. Now, there was many things I could have picked and I could still tell many stories. And if you've been listening to the podcast, you've heard a lot of my personal stories. But this episode, I'm not going to tell a personal story. I'm going to talk about the journey of the guests that I've had on. I mean, I've had met- metaphysical guests. And that's the one thing about this show. I mean, which, which genre does it fit in? Well, it's kind of all over the place because truthfully, we all have that better two moment. We all have that expanse of our lives. And I don't only focus now after 
four seasons, it's not all just about the better two moment. It's about life. It's about our journey. And sometimes it's about fun. But as I was saying, you know, the metaphysical journey, I talk to somebody that sees light. I talk to somebody who lives in a haunted house. I talk to somebody, you know, who practices spiritual alchemy and manifestation and, and mediumship. And just there's so much out there in that genre. But then we also talked about real life, divorce, grief, loss, following your passion, what a gift life is, you know, and survival. And well, one of the more popular episodes, I hate to say, is the sex therapist episode where, yes, I'm very candid about my experience. Well, at least some of it. Anyway, that's neither here nor there right now. But that's the thing about this podcast. It's like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to be candid. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to embrace what my guest is talking about. If I can relate to it, it's easy for me to embrace it because I've been through that. I've been through this experience. And that's something that I've talked about on the show before is when somebody sits there and says, wow, all the things you've been through. And I haven't even shared half the stuff. But the thing is, you know, how did you survive? Well, the fact of the matter is, had I not gone through those things, well, I wouldn't have the life that I do now. I wouldn't be able to embrace those conversations, these topics, and even the stuff that I am not familiar with, I'm learning from. And that's one thing I'm grateful for about for the podcast about is I've talked to people that, you know, when I'm talking to, and I'm going to, you know, the, the show that I would go back to is Ben Winters, and it was about managing your expectations. And that conversation was so enlightening because of the fact that at that time, I really didn't frame it right. I really didn't think about how my expectations framed everything. And it's important. It's important that we actually look at our own expectations. So the podcast actually has taught me a little bit. And I hope that you guys have learned things as well. I mean, which I've had guests that talked about alcoholism. I've had guests that have survived suicide. I've had guests that have thought about suicide. And I've had vets talk about their experience, some good, some bad, and how they've dealt with it after. I've had people be very candid about the anxiety and the stress and how it affects their lives. And I think that's one thing that we don't talk about enough, that we weren't given the tools to handle it. And as we've progressed with technology, we just go on and go on and go on. We don't actually sit there and go, okay, I need to take a step back. We just think that we can keep going. And our body sometimes will say, mm -mm, Professor Pete said that. Professor Pete realized that stress was such a big deal for him because he was supposed to be at a business meeting and he's in the hospital and they're still calling saying, hey, are you going to be able to do this? Really? At a certain point, you know, one person told me when I had pneumonia and went back to work and my employee told me I was a supervisor. He's like, no job is worth your health. And that's the truth. But, but, but we have become such a society where we have to embrace money and we have to embrace keeping up with people. And the fact of the matter is we need to just find joy in life. And sometimes money isn't going to buy you happiness. If anything, we're taught to seek outside of ourselves for that instant gratification to fix things, to make us feel better, that endorphin rush. But the whole fact of the matter is it's temporary. And when the credit card bills come, then that's a whole nother set of stress. So sometimes we need to step back and we need to really look at ourselves and see, hey, how do I get to where I need to be? How do I fix things? How do I get me to a better place? And that's one thing about the podcast. It's got those tips in there. It's got those those skills sometimes in there. When I'm talking to a guest, they've talked about their journey. They've talked about how, you know, how that they were going to go up into a temple and realize that it was dark and their anxiety was getting to the best of them. And while it would have been a great memory, they knew that their body and mental status couldn't handle it. So let me take a step back and not go. And is that wrong? She doesn't regret making that choice. But we all have those moments where we push, push, push. And sometimes we need to step back and go, you know what? I need a break. And that's the same thing even when you're arguing with somebody. You just kind of need to stop and go, I'm just going to step away. 
and then come back when you're when cooler heads prevail, as I say, because then we have a different perspective. The other topics we talked about, you know, divorce. Divorce is something that people talk about and in the same process of losing a lot a loved one, whether it's divorce or losing them to death, there's different different factors and different actions that play out for us, that imprint on us, that stay with us. And we have to make choices of how do we continue on in our life. And that's every day, whether you've lost somebody or not, you have to keep moving along. But while we talked about those things, I've had some wild guests. I mean, I had a lawyer who ended up blowing up his law career because he did something wrong and ended up in prison. I had a gentleman who landed a gyrocopter on the U.S. Capitol lawn because he wanted to give a delivery of mail to the Senate about campaign reform. You know, I've talked to a neuroscientist and we talked about how everybody's connected. May the force be with you. Yes. I mean, you don't think about those things, but it's true. And then, you know, we had adoption stories, you know, good, bad and different about adoption stories. We've had really great adoption stories. We've had blended family stories. I've had authors on, I've had inventors on, I had a, you know, an actor or two, I've had TV producers, you know, and music producers. And the fact of the matter is when I look at this, it's like, there's this whole melting pot of stories and people that I've got, I've been fortunate enough to talk to, you know, one thing that I, that I'm amused by, and I'm glad I did. And I reached out to them. I had some help with Reese, uh, Reese Ulrich, but Enrico, I reached out to, and I was surprised when he decided, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. So I guess I was fortunate enough to interview two very good looking men. And the thing about it is we didn't talk necessarily about the focus on their looks. While Enrico, I did a little bit because he's a cover model. We talked about their lives and their journeys and the things they want to do with their life and how, you know, they're not just a pretty face, that there's more to them behind that pretty face. You know, Enrico just finished college and now he's he's working with the Israeli council and Reese is trying to help people have better mental health and try to live naturally. And he wants to give back as a filmmaker. So, I mean, that when you can sit there and take somebody that you look at and say, oh, they're just a pretty face. No, there's a lot more there. And they're using that to help others. And that is a very very important gift. Now, when I look at the fun side, you know, I look at Trent Hudson, his date coffee company and the animation that he did and the things that he has created in his journey about how he's trying to get his show, you know, on the, on Netflix. There's all these journeys that I've talked to people about. I've talked to, you know, musicians that I have a whole laundry list of musicians that have been on my show and I love talking to them because music, it was something that I wanted to do while I'm an author. Music was my thing. And I mean, talking to artists like Joe Lewis, who's in Brazil. Yeah. Granted he was originally here, but now he's found a whole new world in Brazil and he's making a name for himself. And then there's Peyton Howie who just was on CMT, you know, to be part of that journey, to get the, to have the pleasure of speaking with them as they're coming up. It's a big deal. And it may not seem like it's anything, but to be part of their journey, to be part of their path, it's really a gift. I mean, Sherry Rowe, I just talked to, and she's got a new video and she's just full of energy and everything. And she's coming back to be on the soundtrack of our live show, which is awesome. And then I talked to Ricky Duran and then Mustafa Taco, who had a very interesting story about a collaboration that went south. But the fact of the matter is, these are real people that had a dream and they pursued their dream. And that, that is a big deal. That is an amazing gift to watch all these people succeed. And even if they don't succeed to the level that they think they're going to, they still have been brave enough to attempt it. And for anybody that's trying to be a musician, they have stories that can, you can learn from, especially Ricky's story. If you think going on a singing competition could change your life, or any reality competition show, it's some food for thought. So you might want to check it out. So now when I look back, 
I think of this wild ride that all these episodes have been. And while I'm at three episodes a week, and I think that's awesome, and I'm sure you guys love having that much content, I realize that having four shows and wanting to have some kind of life and, and keep my health in check and, and be an author, I have to take a step back. So this going forward is going to be kind of the schedule. On Mondays, we will have the Better Two podcast. And on Fridays, we will try to have a musical guest or something in the creative arts of the Better Two podcast. In some podcasts, I do have some two-episode podcasts, and those will air Monday and Wednesday for the most part. Typically, on Wednesdays, when we don't have a B2 double episode, that is when we're going to be having an episode of the Better Two Soundtrack of Our Lives podcast. And that opens up the door for a little bit more time for me. And on Saturdays, as I said, we have the B2D2 podcast that's live. And on Sunday mornings, the Better Two Weekly Intuitive podcast comes out. So that's a lot of content for you guys. And I hope you guys appreciate it. Now, let's talk about season five as we're moving forward. Season five has a couple of people that I do consider friends of the show, especially um, when I serve on, I will have to say is one of the friends of the show because Servon's been on the show twice and Servon just reached out and said, Hey, I want to come back. So Servon's coming back. Will he be talking about music? We don't know. We just have a good time. Same thing with my friend, Sarah Martucci. She's coming back. And while we talked about Sasquatch and aliens on the Halloween episode, I'm not sure what we're going to talk about, but we can always find a conversation to talk about whether it's metaphysics, life in general, or whatever. So Sarah's coming back as well. And something that I'm, I'm happy to say is Merchant's coming back too. He's releasing an album next month and he's coming back to share it with us. So that is kind of a big deal. And I'm excited to sit down with him. Another person that is coming back um, that, you know, she made a, quite an impression on me. And that was Jules A. She had a book out called The Making of a Woman that came out in, I believe, season four. Anyway, her and I sat down and we recorded a conversation about her life as a dominatrix. Yes, she was a fem, fem, female dom and a femdom. And uh, we talk about that and we talk about sex a little bit and we dabble in talking about her being a female bodybuilder. So right there, that little, those, those four people are pretty intense, but we have other people as well. We have stories about suicide and how somebody got passed and we have a story about overcoming and overcoming bullying and how that it formed their life and how it trans changed their life and how they moved forward from it. We also have stories from somebody who had an abusive mother and we have stories about one story. One story in particular is Audra Bryant's Audra talks about, and she's, I believe the third episode of the season. She talks about how at being a toddler, she pulled a cup of hot coffee off the table and it scalded her and she ended up having six surgeries. And this was something that she would not, she wouldn't look into a mirror because she didn't want to see the scars. She didn't look in a mirror for a long time. And she takes us on this journey of how it affected her and how she had to move through it. So that's, that's a whole story in itself. Um, I also have some musical guests besides Merchant and Servon. I have Pax and Chase. Um, let's see. Wow. I have so many people that I have to actually think about it for a second. Let me check. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. So I have, like I said, some musical guests um, coming up and they're going to be a whole range. We have Kingsley. We have Hudson Valley. And a couple more that are still waiting to be recorded. Pax and Chase is another. But there's also an episode that's a two-part episode that I think you guys will find fascinating. I talked to somebody named Kalea who died several times over. And she talks about how each experience differed. And she talks about how it was transformed, how it transformed her life. And 
how it she her now her mission is to help others. So we talk about that. Like I said, this is a wild season. There's guests from all over all different walks of life. And yes, I have some two parters in there, but I think it's going to be a fascinating season. And I hope you guys enjoy it just as much as you've enjoyed the other episodes, the prior episodes. So I guess on that note, since it's been a wild ride and this is kind of a rambling episode because, well, things didn't work out exactly as planned. And that seems to be the, the par for the course right now for a lot of people and a lot of things. Anyway, I hope you continue to tune in to the Better Two podcast. I greatly appreciate your support. As always, if you've missed an episode and you want to catch up because you just discovered us, you can go to bettertwopodcast.com and all our social links are there. And if you want to check out any of the other shows that I've mentioned or get a reading from me or check out my books, you can do so at dmneedham.com. That's dmneedham.com. So on that note, I hope you have a wonderful day, weekend, whenever you're listening. And here's to season five. And hopefully I'll be back next year for our second year anniversary. Anyway, have a great day, guys. And I'll catch you next time. Bye. The Better Two Podcast is mixed, edited, and produced by Rich Zai of Third Ear Audio Productions.